Hey you, yeah you who clicked on this video, thanks for giving our channel a shot. And if you will, please do us the honor of watching the video all the way through. Appreciate it. Now on to the video. What's going on fellow 8-Bit Heroes? I am so happy and it has been so worth the wait to get back into the town. What are we going to do today? Well, we're going to recap the latest episode of From Season 2, Episode 1, Strangers in a Strange Land. So, if you haven't seen this episode, what are you doing here? Leave watch the episode and come back because this is going to be full of spoilers and if you don't care about spoilers then feel free to uh, watch the rest of this episode you have been warned so let's get into it all right this episode opens with uh hard rain's gonna fall we see boyd ringing the bell and uh as he's ringing the bell the rain just gets harder and harder then his hands start to shake we know that this is uh due to the condition that uh he revealed in season one um and then he wakes up uh, from his nightmare um, stuck in what seems to be I don't know like a chimney or like a well or maybe I don't know but it's very cramped it's uh, rectangular in shape and it's covered in bricks so whatever the place is he, it's it's too cramped for him to get really a good way to shimmy out so he's really frustrated and stuck so what happens after that well after uh, as it uh as it rains, the bus that we saw in the season finale of season one arrives in the town uh, full of passengers. And uh, then we see this one passenger um, get up and start yelling about how they need to leave. They need to turn around because, every, you know, there's nothing good here. Everything's bad. Um, and so the bus stops in front of the diner. We know what's coming for that bus. Oh, when it gets dark outside. As the rain gets heavier, we see Jane and the rest, or Jade and the rest of the uh, people at Colony House scramble to get the electronics from the tower that they, uh, the radio tower that they had made, um, you know, desperately get that stuff back in so that the rain doesn't damage it just in case they want to try uh, again as far as getting somebody on the radio. Meanwhile, we see that Julie is looking for her dad as uh, many people have been injured uh, from the storm. Uh, so glass is breaking. It's, it's just really weird. It's a really wild storm. It defies explanation. But hey, when you're living in the town, you know, very little things make sense. One lady gets her eye basically put out by flying glass. Like it's it's a really bad situation. So then we see uh, Jade yell at Donna like because she's just not hearing him that there is a bus in front of the diner and Donna of course knows what this means and they're really kind of just left in a really, really weird situation without Boyd being there to kind of give them leadership and direction. So Jim is looking for Tabitha uh, in the hole. He leaves Colony House, runs to the house um, to see where Tabitha is only to find um, that the hole has basically collapsed in on itself. We see Tabitha and Victor who has uh, saved Tabitha the way from the cave-in uh, walking through these underground caves that are underneath the town and he is incessantly telling her to shut up but she just keeps panicking and talking he's telling her that the monsters live down there but she just i don't know why she's not getting the hint like she hasn't seen people just get you know their whole body just wiped uh you know off like a smear you know from these monsters but she just steadily making noise who, who can tell uh, so he also learned that the boy in white told Victor uh, to go down there uh, and that he would uh, get Tabitha down there. So, you know, uh, this is we still don't know really what the boy in white or who the boy in white is. But, you know, it's, it's a really fun mystery to try to figure out. And we see a suitcase with a dress inside. Now, I'm assuming that that's Tabitha's wedding dress, but I'm sure we'll find out later on. Meanwhile, Kenny and Donna argue about retrieving the busload of people at the diner and whether or not they should stop them. Uh, and of course, Donna is right. They need to stop them as Boyd would have, of course, Boyd would have thrown out the spike strip and whatnot. Uh, but they don't, they didn't have that luxury given that they were already dealing with their own problems. So they all agree, uh, Christy, Kenny, uh, and Donna agree that they're going to go and retrieve the uh, people on the bus and let them know what's what so they can get their nice little freak out on and then get down with the program or, you know, become somebody's dinner. Passengers from the bus wait outside the closed diner, because obviously it's locked because everybody was focused on the radio tower, and uh, try to give the panicking man, who we find out his name is Elgin, medical attention. He explains that he had a bad dream, then is confronted uh, by the man that he 
threw up on in the beginning of the episode and rightly so i mean nobody wants to be thrown up on so i don't really see this as you know excessively antagonistic but rather you know like dude we were trying to help you and you just up chucked all over me so like, what the heck so then we see ellis who runs into julie and the bartender uh and they try to explain that help is coming julie finds jim in the basement and jim tells julie to get help and Julie, Ellis, and the bartender ask the passengers of the bus to help, which I thought was really interesting. It gives them something to focus on so that I guess when and if Donna and Kenny uh, end up telling them what's what and that they have to, you know, find shelter before it gets dark, it would be a lot easier being that they've just, you know, gotten through a, a situation and help. But this bus driver, oh my God. Now, I understand where she's coming from, being that she has no idea what's going on. But, you know, she is a great a butthole. Like, I, I really don't like her. Uh, but I'm sure we'll we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll get to it. She'll, she'll probably become likable if she's not dinner. So uh, then we see that uh, the, the people that went from the bus to help uh, the bartender and Jim uncover the hole, uh, they, they start helping each other. Victor and Tabitha find rats that are eating, I guess, remains in the caves. And Tabitha still will not shut the hell up. Then we go to Boyd and he's yelling for Sarah uh, because, you know, that's who he was traveling with. And we still don't know what has happened to Sarah. So that is a point of concern, given that, you know, they both went into the tree and I'm guessing that they ended up in two different places. So uh, we hear a voice at the top of uh, this chimney well or whatever it is. And it's asking, you know, hey, are you real to Boyd? And of course, Boyd is like, yeah, you know, I'm real. He says, OK, well. If I'll help you if you help me when you get up here. Now, we don't know what he means by that because we don't know what here is. Uh, but he drops a rope and tells him to hurry because somebody or he will be back soon. We don't know who this person is, but we know that it, it's obviously not. And we're, I'm still trying to figure out why he's not, why he can't help him if he's at the top. But I'm sure we'll find out. So uh, then the lady who got the glass in her eye. Uh, she's asking Jade whether or not uh, he thinks that uh, they made the town angry uh, by using, by you know, uh, starting the signal with the radio tower. And then Jade uh, kind of, you know, freaks out. He has a, another vision where he sees uh, the symbol again from the diary, and he then sees a dummy, like a, a literal dummy, like just staring at him, and he freaks out. And of course, you know, he got to go smoke one now. Jay doesn't deal well with these hallucinations. He just doesn't. So we see that uh, Ethan starts talking to Kenny's, uh, Kenny's mom uh, while they help each other clean up the mess that uh, is Colony House currently. And she tells him that she's going to protect him. And this is a really nice scene. Then we see that Ethan is now uh, ready to annoy the hell out of Jay. <laughs> um, and, you know, they have a nice little banter back and forth because, you know, Ethan's a little boy. And he encourages Jade, you know, that, hey, just because this didn't work out, we can still try again. And as the conversation goes on, Jade then asks Ethan where Victor's room is, because we know that Jade uh, knows that there's a connection to the symbol in Victor. So Victor and Tabitha see a bunch of bikes and toys and old electronics um, and a sleeping monster in the cave. And... Then Victor starts to hallucinate and sees the same dummy that Jade saw. He starts panicking. Uh, he, even though he had told Tabitha that you know she needed to be brave to get out of here, he's now just kind of a huddled mess on the floor. Um, and Tabitha has to encourage him to keep moving because obviously they don't want to be there when the monsters wake up. So Jade rummages through Victor's room, for clues, and tells Ethan and Victor is probably uh, tells Ethan that Victor is probably dead. And Ethan tells Jade that Victor is most certainly not dead, but is rather doing his part of the quest. Jade then asks, you know, what is he talking about? And Ethan tells him that uh, everybody has their own part to play in this quest, in fulfilling the quest. So Jade shows Ethan the symbol and the picture of a younger Victor in the Polaroid. And Ethan tells Jade that he needs to figure out whether the symbols are good or bad. And I know that this is going to come back later on, so uh, in the season. And I feel like this has kind of added another weird dimension to everything that's going on. <clears throat> so we see the bus driver argue with Donna about whether or not the passengers can get back on the bus. And Elgin is having another panic attack that is followed by a seizure. 
and Matthew's house then starts collapsing in on itself the more they try to pull debris out of the hole to the point where the entire house collapses in on itself. So at this point, Jim, Tom, the bartender, and the passengers are all covered in debris. Uh, and, you know, they're, uh, the rest of the passengers and the people in the town now have to figure out a way to get them out. Tabitha and Victor find little cages, I guess, made of kind of like bone or something in these caves with little creatures inside. Um, and the monsters start to wake up. Then we get hit with our first big bombshell. Uh, the pediatric, I guess she's a pediatric nurse. She is, in fact, Christie's fiance. And oh man, you could have bought Kenny for a dollar. He was crushed. He thought he had a chance. Boy, you were wrong. So this is going to add another dimension of drama to the proceedings. So now we see Boyd climbing out of the rope. Um, he gets uh, briefly distracted by a hallucination of Ellis asking, you know, if they were going to get on the boat. And obviously this is more than likely the environment messing with him because it doesn't want him to find what's on the uh, top side of whatever structure he's in. Tabitha and Victor escape tunnel and get into the woods and have to run back to town before it gets dark. The bus driver, who's now motioning the passengers back on the bus, uh, meanwhile Jim is telling the others not to move anything else and that they need to leave them there overnight uh, so that not only they can survive but the people don't get caught up when it gets dark. Now this is a risky gamble but Donna uh, wants to assure um, Julie that you know, before they found the talismans, that was kind of their way of uh, of getting by is basically being quiet and hiding. So the bus driver tries uh, starts the bus and tries to get the passengers on. But Donna tells them uh, that if they want to live, they will get in the diner. Um, the bus driver is having none of that. So Donna takes things into her own hands and takes a shotgun and proceeds to shoot the tires out of the bus. Then, uh, you know, and this basically everybody starts panicking. Kenny then fires his gun, motions some of the passengers or most of the passengers rather into the diner. And some of them break off running into the town and Fatima and Ellis now have to go corral them so that they don't get killed uh, overnight. So uh, Jim now is basically telling Julie that he has that she has to leave him there. And then we get the final scene of the episode where Boyd gets to the top of what we find out is a well, and he finds a man chained up to a wall. And the man then, you know, he's like, yes, this is great. And then he sees Boyd has a gun. He's like, oh, and you have a gun. That's even better. And Boyd is like, well, why is me having a gun a good thing? And the man that's chained up says, oh, it's a good thing because, you know, it'll be easier for you to kill me. And that is where the episode ends. So who is this man tied up? Who is he afraid of? Who ch uh, chained him up in the first place? Um, where the hell is uh, Sarah? We still don't know that. Are, is everybody going to be able to get into shelter and have talismans uh, in their structures before it gets dark outside? Um, what is going to happen to Boyd is really my biggest question right now. And the thing that I'm mostly worried about. So uh, let me know what you guys thought about the episode in the comments section and what you think is going to happen next episode. And we will see you guys next week. 8-Bit uh, Heroes out. Peace. If you'd like to get a shout out on the channel, then hit that like button. Maybe share it with a couple of friends and do us the biggest honor of all and subscribe to the channel so you can join the 8-Bit Heroes family. And while you're at it, hit that bell icon so you can be notified when our new videos come out.